Okay, welcome to the next episode of using the biggest falls from grace in every single weight class. Um, we've done the heavyweight division, light heavyweight division, and we've done the middleweight division. Of course, in the heavyweight division, we went with um, Junior Dos Santos. In the light heavyweight division, we went with John Jones. And in the middleweight division, we went, of course, with Anderson, the Spider Silva. Starting things off in the welterweight division, it is, of course, Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley defended his title. What is this? There it is. Tyron Woodley defended his title four times. He, uh, of course, he won the belt against. He won the belt against Robbie Lawler, knocked him out in the first round. And then he defended the belt against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson the first time, fought him a second time, defended the title. Then he fought Damian Maya, defended the title against Damian Maya. And then he his last title defense was against Darren Till, which was a very impressive performance. And then from there, Woodley just went downhill. Just went way downhill. Since then, he has lost to Kamaru Usman. He has lost to Gilbert Burns. He has lost to Kobe Covington. I'm pretty sure I'm missing one more loss. And of course, he lost to Jake Paul. So, it's like... He's... When you talk about falls from grace, he definitely falls... He falls into that 100%. A man who went from being a dominant champion in the UFC to freaking losing to Jake Paul in a boxing match. It's kind of... And agreeing to, to get a tattoo that says I love Jake Paul so he can get a rematch against Jake Paul. It's like, that is a fall from grace if you ask me. So, we are going to do him justice in this fight. We're facing Vicente Luque. This is a fairly good player. Although, I'm very familiar with him. All right, ripping him, leg kicks. You guys will notice how I'm really using those leg kicks very well. This is a skill that, it's a skill that it would have been so nice to see Tyron Woodley use. Oh, oh, damn, okay. Good. Another one. Yes. Leg kicks, would it's a skill. A strike would have been nice to see Tyron Woodley throw a lot more when he was in the UFC, when he was still fighting. Because he, I mean, he, he has powerful leg kicks. Very powerful leg kicks. We've seen him do some serious damage with them. But... It's just, in general, man, it would have been nice to see Tyron Woodley just fight more, you know? It would have been nice to see him throw more, do more, be more active. But I think... He's confident. He's confident enough to push me like this. I don't think it's gonna work out for him. He's been hurt really badly. It's only a matter of time before he gets rocked. There we go. Set him down with the body shot. There we go. There we go. Yeah, like I was saying, man, it would have been nice to see Woodley just throw more. But at the end of the day, when you kind of look at the way he fights, it seems like he was just very afraid of, of getting tired. You know, I think he's he felt fatigue in there. Did not like that feeling whatsoever. And so, he just wants to make sure that at all times... Dang! Bum, bum, bum. Just wants to make sure that at all times, he has enough stamina to actually go. To go for it. So, you know, that is one thing these guys have to take into account. You know, these very powerful, quick twitch fighters. You know, like the Francis Ngannou, the uh, Tyron Woodleys of the world. The Yoel Romero's of the world. That's it. Damn. Damn, dude. The man ran head first into a cross from hell. It wasn't even really a cross from hell. It was just a regular just binker. Just a just a 
tiny little sh cross shot right down the middle. Sat him down. Let's see if we can see watch that again. Let's go ahead and watch that one more time. Look at this. Boom. Jab straight. One, two. Down the middle. And he is dead. All right, folks. Let's move on to the next guy, BJ Penn. So, this one should not really come as a surprise to most of you. You know, with this one, I was a little bit torn. It was either going to be Anthony Pettis or BJ Penn, but after really, really looking at it, um, I think the correct answer for this one is BJ Penn. Like, BJ Penn definitely is the biggest fall from grace in the lightweight division. Just because of, it's like, especially if you're a newer fan, um, it's very difficult to understand how good BJ Penn used to be. You know, there was a time when BJ Penn was the definition of the best boxer in the UFC. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And for good reason. He was the perfect boxer grappler archetype, you know? Really, really good hands. I'm talking really nasty hands, which we're gonna see if we can demonstrate right here against this Dustin Poirier. Careful, Dustin Poirier. EK, he's an EK player. One of those camps. Um, uh, what's his name? BJ Penn. It's been said numerous times that the man won a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt competition after only three years of doing Jiu Jitsu. Just to put it into perspective, a majority of people get their blue belt after like three years of doing Jiu Jitsu. Like, if you. You know, if you're not a if, you, if if you're not a competitor, if you're just training, it'll take you about three years to get your blue belt. You know what I mean? Unless you're super regular. But BJ Penn literally lived lived his life and trained jujitsu, and with that, the man was able to win a black belt competition after only three years of starting jujitsu. Pretty goddamn impressive. He's that's why they call him the prodigy. He really was. And then he uh, he choked out Matt Hughes, choked him out. I believe he got him with a a rear naked choke. I don't remember that fight too much, but he choked him out. And after he choked him out, he won the. Uh... No, no, no. I'm talking about the welterweight. BJ Penn, for a very long time, was the lightweight champion. Defended that belt so many different times. Was considered the best lightweight in the world. And BJ Penn also was... Got him. BJ Penn was also one of these guys that would just go up in weight. He was one of the first guys to, like, move up in weight astronomically. This man fought Lyoto Machida at light heavyweight. If, I'm, if I remember that correct. He moved all the way to the light heavyweight division to fight Lyoto Machida. It's either at light heavyweight or even at heavyweight. It's one of those. It's either light heavyweight or heavyweight. You guys correct me in the comment section if I got that wrong. But yes, BJ Penn. This, the same BJ Penn that was lightweight champion. And at one point even moved, back, even moved down to the featherweight division. Yeah, BJ Penn fought as high as light heavyweight. Maybe even the heavyweight division. He fought Lyoto Machida. He was pretty fat and big and <laughs> chubby. Of course, he fought uh, George St. Pierre. He fought GSP, I think, three times? It, it was either three times or twice. I think it was just twice. He fought GSP twice at welterweight. Also fought Matt Hughes uh, twice at welterweight. At welterweight, he also fought Nick Diaz. He lost that fight, of course. But he's... Uh, There we go. Set him down again. Yeah, very surprising that I am having an easy time outboxing this man, even though he's got Dustin Poirier. He's just not using Dustin properly. He's fighting scared, which is weird. It's weird to see that with someone using Dustin Poirier. Oh! Spoke too soon. 
Rock them again. Dude, BJ Penn today feels so freaking powerful. Holy shit, what the hell? He feels so freaking powerful. Sit him down again. And he crit. He's gone. He figured he figured the fight was over and he decided to just bounce. All good. We're going to move on, folks, to the uh, featherweight division and you know exactly who it's going to be. Be right back. All right, so finally, finally, we found a fight in the featherweight division. Thank you. And it is Jose Aldo. So this one should not really come as a surprise to you guys. Jose Aldo is definitely the biggest fall from grace in this weight class. For a very long time, Aldo was the only featherweight champion in the UFC. Coming over from the W um from the WEC dominating lots and lots of uh, very good fighters in his weight class. He fought the absolute best fighters in his weight class. Chad Mendez twice. Defeated Mark Hominick. Mark Hominick will forever be one of my favorite fighters ever to compete. I love watching that guy fight. Defeated Kenny Florian. Uriah Faber. Okay. Swift. He's been in there with the best of the best that his weight class has to offer. He really has. And he was a champion for a very long time until one notorious Conor McGregor got him. Careful with that. Came into the picture and uh, decided to ruin the party. Decided to ruin the party. Knock him out in 13 seconds. And then after that, of course, Aldo. His next fight after that Conor McGregor fight, I believe, was Frankie Edgar. That's a fight that he definitely... I think he, he beat Frankie Edgar twice in his career. He beat Frankie Edgar twice. So he beat Frankie again. And uh, at the time, when he got a chance at fighting for the belt again, I believe the champion at the time was... I think the champion at the time was Max Holloway. Or either Aldo was champion. Dude, I'm drawing a blank. On the timeline of a lot of these things. But I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comment section. Aldo was either champion somehow. When he fought Max Holloway. Or Max Holloway was champion at the time. And um. I think what happened was. I think Aldo became champion again. For some reason. Either because Connor went up to go fight for the light heavyweight. I mean for the lightweight belt. And never defended his featherweight belt, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, Connor never defended his belt. So, I think he was stripped. And Aldo, I think Aldo got the belt back when he fought Frankie Edgar. I think that's what happened. He got it back when he fought Frankie Edgar. Or, it's either he got the belt back. Dude, I should have probably looked this shit up. It's either he got the belt back when he fought Frankie Edgar. Or... His fight against Max Holloway was going to be for the vacant title. It's one of those. But of course, Max Holloway stopped him, which was uh, sad to see. He fought Max Holloway a second time. Max Holloway stopped him a second time. And, uh, man, since then, Aldo just has not been able to quite capture a bell. He's not been able to get back his title at the featherweight division. And he's tried to get the title, of course, at the bantamweight division. You want to do it like that, bro? Shit. Yeah, I'm not not backing down, bro. Not backing down from you. Crazy. My man trying to bully me. 
No, sir. Leg kick. That will get you in trouble if you keep doing that. Like okay. it. Aldo tried to capture that belt in the bantamweight division. He hasn't quite been able to do that either. Now, there's a very good possibility he's going to become champion again. It's definitely possible. If anyone can do it, it's Aldo. But so far, he just has not been able to do it. So... For a man, for him to go from champion, you know, I'm talking one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, a man who it was unheard of. It's like you can't, a man who you couldn't really imagine, got him, a man who you really couldn't imagine who would beat him. It was on that Anderson Silva level where it's like, okay, who can beat this guy? You know, like who is it going to be? Who's going to be able to stop this guy? And Connor came out there and not only stopped him, but just made it look easy just just sniped him and just uh, crazy man still one of the most impressive things that's it don't be doing that these side steps will get you that's it are you gonna be able to survive brother no you're done you are done and uh this is where we are going to end it we're gonna end it right here i'm gonna keep playing um I'm going to keep playing and try to get a fight in the bantamweight division. Of course, the bantamweight division is going to be Henan Barrow. So we'll get a fight in the bantamweight division. But I'm not going to upload it. I'm not going to put it in this video right here just because I don't want this to be um, I don't want this to be too long. I want to keep this one short and sweet so it's palatable, easily digestible. So you guys actually like it. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I will see you guys later with a brand new one. As always, stay safe. Peace out.